Hello and very welcome to the Jamal Podcast. I'm John Van. Of course, this podcast brought to you by OrgRetro.com. You can program Jamal Podcast to get 15% off on the website. Loads of gear dropping just in time for the championship, so get your hands on it. And today I'm joined by former Dublin footballer, a current New York footballer, uh, Shane Cardi, to talk about last weekend's Total Cup games and, of course, this weekend's championship action. So, really looking forward to uh, chatting to Shane today. Obviously, Shane uh, played Carlo with the weekend there with a five point loss, unfortunately. but Obviously, it was, a, it was a good game, a good game of football, but Carlo just about had enough in the end. And I suppose I'll start with Shane. How are you keeping anyway, Shane? Good, yeah. We've had a, a, a couple of days of, uh, I wouldn't say celebrating, but um, of uh, <laughs> catching up with all friends. So, um, yeah, a bit rough for wearing out today. Mm, mm, 100%. As long as you're not doing Jack really, Sean, I don't know if you follow Jack on any social <laughs> media, but... Uh, yeah, he's, he's three sheets to the wind as we speak uh, at this current minute in time. And I suppose, obviously, the, the game, we'll, we'll touch on the game now in a couple of, couple of minutes, but I suppose, how's the outgoing emotion from it since Saturday? Yeah, like, looking back, uh, we, we were just trying to more, more so focus on the performance um, than anything else, which we definitely did get in the first half. Like, we were two points up, and then we'll probably have a few regrets um, that, you know, we didn't take our opportunities. Um, but, you know, we, we probably hadn't as much work done the last few weeks, it's tough to keep everyone the momentum going and everyone training and the ball rolling, especially, you know, stateside, there's so much going on between work and fellas' lives over there. So, um, whereas, you know, prior to the Leitrim game, everything was, was built around that. Uh, so, in, nearly in the back of our heads, if we had as done as much work, I think we probably could have turned Carlo over there on, on Saturday. But then again, fair, fair, in fairness to them, they came out very strong in the second half and, you uh, dictated the game so we, we can have no real complaints yeah yeah definitely we'll obviously touch on the game now in a few minutes but uh, just before we get the ball rolling a bit of housekeeping to look after uh, obviously uh, news broke last week about the sudden passing of Cork uh, legend Teddy McCarthy of course Teddy McCarthy he's the only man to win an All-Ireland title in football and hurling in the same season and Teddy unfortunately passed away at the age of 56 so that's uh, all our thoughts and prayers go out to the McCarthy family at this um, moment in time what a legend Shane yeah I mean to win that to do that and this if you think about it in this day and age it would be nearly impossible right so to do it uh, not too long ago is uh, is very very impressive mm. yeah obviously uh, thoughts and prayers going to the McCarty family at this difficult time without they're still trying to get their heads around that particular situation and Teddy God be good to you. And I suppose just before we crack in, the Total Cup team of the week for this week was Ian Duffy in between the sticks, a full back line of Patrick McCarthy, uh, Mikey Banbrook, and Robert Piggott, and then a half back line of Glenn Malone, Mark Timmons, and Kieran Moran, and then a midfield of Brian Malloy and Connor Doyle, and then a half forward line of Joe Hagan, Owen Nolan, and then Dara Foley, and then a full forward line of Evan O'Carroll, Pat Haveron, and Mark Roster. And then the footballer of the week nominees are Mark Roster, Pat Haveron, and Mark Timmons, a couple of questions on that one there. Shane, I suppose obviously they come up against Carlo on Saturday, and obviously Mikey Bambrick, Kieran Moran, Connor Doyle, and Dara Foley. Did they impress you? To be honest, I wouldn't even know them if they were in front of me. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, um, honestly, yeah. it's the best policy, Shane. I love it. <laughs> um, and I wouldn't know too many others in that in that team of the week, um, just from from previous. Years with Dublin and, and with Vincent, you just wouldn't have come across a lot of those names. But um, I would say Dara Foley, in fairness, he, he kicked a, a good few frees there the last day. Um, but I thought Jordan Morris, he had a very good game as well for Carlo. Um, he was dictating, so I'm surprised he wasn't in it. But uh, yeah, again, I, I never really looked too much at, at those things. You'd, you'd wonder who's nearly picking these these teams. It's near, a bit like the All-Stars, you know, like... Philly McMahon came out there last week was was talking about that so I think these these things players don't really read too much into them you know yeah yeah I think uh, I, I keep I've kind of been basically saying all season I don't know are they just picking names are they actually really actually watching the games half the time because it just seems to be who's the who's the big big stars and big names we can go with for this week I suppose Shane any any New York lads deserve to be in the team of the week or are you thinking or uh, any or have you been hard done by do you reckon or um, I'd say uh, in fairness Gavin O'Brien played a good, good game for us in, in centre forward. Um, Johnny Glynn as well, a strong game. Um, the cornerback, Bulger, um, he, he had a very strong game. I, I wouldn't say I had a bad game myself. It was solid enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely a few there. You know, Even our goalkeeper, we lost our goalkeeper. Um, 
from from the last couple of games, Mick. So we had a guy making his debut, um, and in fairness, he done very well when for 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 his first championship game. Mm, yeah, perfect, Shane, perfect. So it was obviously a good few performances, and of course, build build blocks for next year. Mick, no doubt about it. So Shane, we can touch on to the action in the Tottenham Cup in Nelwich, Connor Park. It was Carlo fifteen points, New York ten points. I suppose we can touch on to the game now. You've obviously you've skinned the game. You were part and parcel this game, playing half forward for New York. I suppose what was the game like, Shane, from your end of things? Yeah, we like tactically we set up very defensive. Um, we 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 tried to catch Carlo a bit on the hop. Um, they probably weren't expecting. They they did not really know what you're going to get, right? So, um, that's the advantage that we do have coming into a lot of these games. Um, they're they're not seeing too much in New York to know what we're doing, or um, they're not seeing too many of our games. Um, so yeah, like at halftime we were winning by two points, and there was a little bit of a breeze, but I think we we ran out of steam the second half in terms of our fitness. Um, we're playing very defensive and then trying to counter-attack. It's hard to keep that going for, for 70, 75 plus. So we can have no real, um, can't, we can't really complain too much. Like we didn't take an, our chances. We did get two goal chances, but um, looking back, like Carlo were probably the better team in the second half in particular. Um, so yeah, no complaints. Yeah, I suppose obviously to get in, to get I suppose the opportunity to come over to Cardo and play play in Netwich Cullen Park, and obviously for some of the New York lads and just the experience. Maybe I know obviously um, Carlo, but it, it's it's great to even get that experience to play in Carlo and just see a different stage and see different fans and I suppose enjoy the experience. Yeah, exactly. I think for New York, it's all about building blocks, right? Like they can't expect you know Rome to be built overnight, so they need to you know last year they ran Sligo close in the championship. But and then got 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 a hammer in off Offley. So this year we obviously got our first championship game, and then after a win, and then obviously we didn't go well against Sligo at all. But to get that first championship win was massive. And then the main thing going into this game was to get a performance right. So not get get not get hammered like we did against Sligo, but also run try and run them really close, and then be in the melting pot, be in the game for as long as we can. And we definitely did that. So. I think they're they're all steps forward for New York. There's a lot of work going in, um, in fairness, by the management team, um, and you can see that 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 has come to fruition early, you know. Absolutely, Shane. I suppose obviously, what's the maybe the learnings from the New York end of things from coming away from this game for Saturday night? Uh, yeah, like I think they probably need to focus more now on the Talton Cup. I'd say if you look at next year, they're probably going to be a big turnover of players. It's very hard to keep guys going. Um, just the, the the living situation in, in in America, particularly in New York, it's a uh, it's the hustle and the bustle, and it's hard to keep guys focused on on GAA when they're out they're outside of Ireland, you know. So that that can be a, a difficult task. Um, I'd say it's just trying to keep players in the group together. If you get a massive turnover of players, then realistically, um, it, you're nearly starting from scratch, right? So that's that's the most important thing. Uh, I'd say they need to tr- maybe try and focus on the Talton Cup in particular. I think that's the way forward for New York. So maybe getting away from the Connacht. Like if you look at it next year, they're meant to be playing Mayo. Realistically, most of that starting 15 don't want to go out and play against Mayo and get, get beat by 25 points in Gaelic Park. So yeah. does that do anyone? It doesn't, it doesn't do anything for Mayo. It's a, it's a big burden of financial cost on Mayo as well, or any team that's coming over. And then... Uh, like those New York players don't want that either. The Mayo players don't want that. It doesn't really do any benefit for anyone. So I would say maybe it's a, an area that they could look to play a, a game, you know, just in the Talton Cup where you could be in the group. If you if they knew they were in the group and they had one game at home in Gaelic Park um, against, you know, a Division 3 or 4 team, which would be very much in their, in their mix. And then the following, you know, week or two weeks, they fly to Ireland and maybe play a game on a, on a Saturday and then stay in Ireland that week, and then maybe play another game on the Sunday, or vice versa, play the game on the Sunday and or and then the following Saturday, whatever it is. I think yeah. that would be a massive. Then they're only doing one trip, and it's a week, and maybe they can qualify then, and and you can cross that bridge if they have to come back. But I think that would probably be the way forward for New York is is really focusing on the Talton Cup, like it's designed to help these so-called weaker counties to get more games. Um, so I think that's definitely what New York need to be focusing on and hopefully the GA will will recognise that and will and will try to promote it that way rather than maybe 
the, the kind of championship. I, I don't know if it's a, it's a much to, to anyone really, you know. Yeah, sure. And I suppose obviously the win against Leeds at that time, and it was great scenes, great scenes of jubilation. But then obviously to come up against Sligo, and then obviously as you were saying, like if, if it's a Mayo next year, if it's a Galway, it's so on and so forth. Like it's just it, meaningless games really for both teams. Like let's be realistic. Exactly, yeah. And and I mean, if you look across the board, right, that I'd nearly argue the provincial championships across the board have a lot, like the Sligo got hammered by Galway. Yeah. Doesn't give us anything to know where Galway's at. Dublin was the same with, with Loud. Um, the only one I can really think of that's very competitive is Ulster. Yeah. Um, outside of that, you know, I think the, the provincial championships might, might, might even be bit of a stalemate there's more emphasis put on the league these days you know even even right now the way the group games are it's it's too many mean, meaningless games that I don't even know who's still in the championship or not in the championship because there's still so much to play you know yeah as the fellow said to me there last week Shane uh, even with the total cup it, it's harder to get knocked out of it than it is than it is yeah, yeah. no yeah. yeah yeah exactly and like yeah. the, I think it's like to be fair like we have a great game right like I think Gaelic games when you watch it it's ferocious. I was in, um, you know, I was in Crow Park yesterday watching the hurling, and they were yeah. absolutely killing each other. Um, and I think that's the same that Gaelic football, when it's at its height in championship, is 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 beautiful to watch. But they're nearly better with less games. But those games being so intense that it's literally war, and you can't walk for a week after it. Whereas mm-hmm. if there's a game every week and it's you're not getting knocked out, you're kind of getting this. Well, we're just going to set up to not get beat or not get beat by much or teams aren't really going hell for leather and you need that I think for the game to be played at the highest level um, like meaning, meaningless games I, I, like some of those group games were, were just ticking the box exercises and I know they were saying every team in Ireland was playing championship football except for yeah. but like what what's the work we're deflating the championship then really you know I think l- l- less is more in some cases yeah, like even the Totten Cup games, I think was it down in Mead and was in Parnell Park there last week. I know every county was playing, like, but just the crowd, Shane, like, there, there wasn't, there wasn't a center really at some of these games, you know. Yeah, I actually watched that down me game last um, last week myself, and and it was in Parnell Park, and I said like you'd, you'd nearly get more of the league game in Parnell Park there, like a club league game that would have more bite to it because both of these teams, not that they were. Not trying to win the game, but you could just see that it wasn't that championship buzz to it, you know. And now there was definitely a, an element to it there on on Saturday because obviously whoever lost was was out. So hopefully now as the games get into these quarter final stages, we'll start to see a ramp up in intensity. But um, I think yeah, I think next year they need to really look at that about do we need preliminary quarter finals? I think mm-hmm. two going through from the group will be plenty. Particularly if Cork are going to be in that group, I would say that would be the way forward for 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 all the counties really um, to get to get the highest standard. Like I know they want people playing as many games as possible, but they need to be meaningful games. Otherwise, you're not going to be getting much better. Uh, like like anything, right? So there's no point going out and kicking 50 balls if you're if you're not getting the right technique, you're not doing the right um, attitude towards the training. And so um, that would be my view on it anyway. Mm. Yeah, points well made, Shane. Points well made. We can maybe look at it again, but how long we talk about restructuring the championship? God, it's 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 trying to, it's like trying to crack the Da Vinci Code at this stage, Shane. I suppose we can crack into the other action that took place on Saturday in Yuri. It was uh, down 120, Longford 112. Tight game, tight game up until maybe 50 or 60 minutes, but down just pulled away in the end. And on down go to play Calvin this weekend, but good win for down at the weekend, Shane. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Longford pushed them, pushed them pretty close from from the from what I hear, um, and like Longford got beat by Carlo there the week before. So um, it's it's honestly difficult to call these Town Cup games because you don't know how what's going on in the background. You don't know who's dropping off or you know our fellas tra- going away. You're only kind of finding out what the team is that on the day of. Um, I'd say we'll start to see now who kind of really wants to win it. And some teams are, like you said, just trying. It's harder to get knocked out of it than it is to stay in it. So um, <laughs> you, you'll kind of see that now over the next couple of weeks, you know. So that, that's a tight one. That's uh, That was actually surprising. I thought Down would have well beaten them by 10 or 15 points. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. They were happy with that result uh, at the weekend, and that was a surprise result here. I have to say, in Bristol Park, it was Leash one eleven for Mana one nine for Mana. Have to be bitterly disappointed with that. Obviously, coming down to their home patch, and Leash definitely aren't a great stead at the minute. But they'll be happy with the result, but that's a disappointing result from from Mana endings. Yeah, big time. Like if we were looking at the draw, hoping we didn't get down or for Mana or or. Um, I don't, I don't think we would have got Kevin, but those two we're definitely trying to avoid. Um, and them so I'm very, very surprised that Fermanagh got beat because Leash couldn't seem to get out her own way there for the last few weeks. So it's a big shock. Mm, yeah, yeah, poor stuff there in Bruce Park. I think Kieran Donnelly will be scratching his head this week, making no doubt about it. And then the last game of the weekend was Wexford. In oh sorry, in Glenix uh, O'Connor Park, it was Wexford one twenty two, awfully two fourteen, and it raged game of football. Of course, it definitely it wasn't televised, unfortunately. But Wexford they eked out the winching. Yeah, I believe it was supposed to be one one of the games of the championship in terms of all scores in the whole game were from play, and um, which is which is very rare in this day and age. Like if you think yeah, yeah. one free, um, so maybe that's going to show the the benefits of the Talton Cup that there is. Actually, a lot of good football on display. Um, so, yeah, fair fair play to Wexford. Mm, absolutely. Ben Brosnan still kicking points for Wexford. God, he's on the bounce a long, long time. So, big shout out to Mr. Brosnan. So, Shane, we can crack into this weekend's action on Saturday in the All-Ireland Senior Football Championship for Round 3. You have Derry against Clare in Glennon Brothers Pierce Park at 6pm. Um, tight wee spin for Clare now and well, Derry as well. But there we go. What do we think for this one, Shane? Yeah, very confident for Derry here. I'd have them in the top four or five teams in the country at the moment. Um, I was chatting to a buddy of mine, Kieran McFall, yesterday, and um, he, he's hopefully that they can push on deep into the championship. So um, I'd fear for Clare on this one. Yeah, yeah, I think Derry are back in the crest of the wave. And obviously, Kieran McFall, he's he's really, really playing great football for Derry. And it's, it's, it's great to see him back and playing such good football, Shane, because obviously you know him. You know him uh, better than anyone else. Yeah, like he, he um, was was living with me for, for was meant to be six weeks, I'd say, and turned out to be six or nine months in uh, <laughs> in Boston. So um, look, I was training with him over the winter, and he's in he's in incredible shape. Um, he's he's just very headstrong as well. So I had no doubt when he was going back that he would make a, a big impact to that Derry team. Um, just a phenomenal athlete and a really good guy as well. So I, I'd. Um, I would definitely think that they're going to go far in the championship. Yeah, yeah, he's he's been some relation. So you're thinking Derry, Derry for that one? Bit of a no-brainer for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be interested to see can Clare put up much of a fight. Then a big one here in Healy Park at 6 p.m. I'll again be live with Go. It's Monaghan against Donegal. Big old, a big ulster clash in. Yeah, this is a tight one now. Um, like obviously, there's a lot of rumours going on about Donegal. In the, the 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 senior team or Donegal GA in general between the county board and the the management team. So, um, I know some players have left, uh, are gone travelling, and some aren't playing at all with the team. So I'd be curious to see now what kind of Donegal team turns up. Um, at Monaghan, they're just one of those teams that just find a way to get results when you least expect it. So yeah. I probably would tip them on this one by maybe a point or two. I suppose obviously Tony Gall a few weekends ago against Derry, Shane, like they put up a really good fight and I suppose they've really kind of turned their season around to a victory because obviously like the league campaign really didn't go well for them. So Tony Gall really have changed, they turned things around, I suppose. Yeah, it's, 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 it, but again, you just don't know. Like the one week they could be great and then the following week they can be very poor. So I think Tony Gall's main problem is getting that bit of consistency. Um, like even in the team, there's there's been a, a big change over the last couple of years. So there's a lot of younger guys there that maybe don't have as much championship experience. Um, so it's it's tough to get that consistency then. Whereas Monaghan are the opposite. They, they've got a lot of experienced heads. Um, they don't always get the results, but they are quite consistent in their performance. So I'd be I'd be confident that Monaghan could, uh, could find a way to beat this one. The same way they find a way to stay in Division 1 every year <laughs> oh yeah yeah that'll be an interesting game this weekend be very interesting can Donegal and maybe back up their last performance get the win there that'll be a game definitely worth keeping an eye on it'll be on GA Go and then we'll stick with the Total Cup action quarter finals to, uh, Total Cup getting really interesting now Calvin against Down it kicks my breath at quarter past five of course game will be live on GA Go
Yeah, I, I think Cabin are probably the, the team to beat in, in the Talton Cup at the moment. They seem to be uh, riding a bit of a wave, so I would uh, I'd favour them strongly in this one. Mm. But then again, down they, they had a poor poor performance uh, at the weekend, but they then pulled away to beat Longford. So and they they were very poor against Mead in the critical stages um, of the game. So you, you wouldn't know they're the type of team that could definitely be a bit of a banana skin as well and maybe the week off for Cavan um, done a bit of a hindrance or maybe it's done a bit of a benefit you wouldn't know so I still think Cavan um, on paper should definitely be winning this game by at least four or five points Fingers crossed Shane Fingers crossed I don't want any well, hopefully we can go and get, go and get the win and win the, win the effing out today <laughs> No I'm not I'm not being too forceful on them but I think we need to just get out of this competition and get back into get back into the big stuff as a fellow said Shane and then we'll move on to meet against Wexford in Park Talton and the game will be live or oh, not even live the game will be at 4pm Park Talton uh, Yeah that's a tight one I'd say Mead realistically again should be winning the game but there's definitely no guarantees in in life or sport, but particularly in the Talton Cup or uh, in GA in, at all, really. So I would say that one, um, Mead should be winning that by by at least three or four points. Yeah, I think Wexford are doing very well at the minute, but I think that might be a step too far. But who knows, Shin? As you said, the Total Cup, it is thrown up a lot and a lot of surprises. And then the last game of Total Cup uh, on Saturday, it's Limerick against Leash in TOS Gaelic Grounds at 3pm. Of course, the game will be live on GA Go. Yeah, like if you had told me that Limerick were playing Leash last week, I would have said this this would probably be a bit of a eight or nine point win for Limerick. But uh, Leash, after getting a win there away, could they do the same thing again? They might get a bit of momentum from that win. Um, so yeah, that one could be tight. I I I, th- I think Limerick should win the game, but it could it could honestly be tight because the like, Limerick got relegated this year. I know Leash had a poor poor league campaign, but realistically, um, there's not much separating the teams in this in in the Talton Cup. I really don't believe it. I think it's it's very little between these teams. Um, across the board, so yeah, we'll go for Limerick on that one. Mm, yeah, I think uh, I think uh, Leash have pulled off a good few results now in the last couple of weeks, but I think that might be a step too far. But who knows? They might do it again, Shin. And then we'll move on to Sunday's action in the All Ireland Senior Football Championship Round Three. Uh, big stuff here: Galway against Armagh in Avant Money Park, Sean McDermott, and it will be four pm. And then the game will be live on RTE. I suppose a few things going into this, Shin. The venue, um, a lot of Garma fans like, they like being kind of vocal on social media. They were kind of saying the game could be in Croke or could have been something else, but they're heading for Leitrim. Yeah, yeah, I think that's definitely an, probably more of an advantage for Galway. Um, but look, I think even even at that, if you're looking for venue changes and and stuff like that, like that that to me, if I'm on the the Galway team, I'm thinking they're looking for excuses already, and we should be trying to capitalise on that. So I'd fancy Galway here. I think they're definitely, you know, top three or four teams in the country at the moment. Um, Armagh, they can definitely be a, a troublesome side, but and will cause problems. But I just can't see them, you know, getting getting anywhere really close to this Galway team. I suppose Shane, like, where do you kind of sit on uh, like the Kieran McGinley, you know, thing of him being there nine, ten years and not winning a whole pile? I suppose like, if if Armagh don't go too far in this all Ireland series, Shane. Like where do you sit on the McGinney debate at present? Um yeah, it's 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 it's, it's a fair comment. Um they've definitely made strides forward, but you they, well, they haven't won anything is the is, and I guess we're always judged more on our losses than we are on our wins. So um I would say but the question is who takes over from right? Um you know Oshie McConville or maybe a, a Tony McEntee Maybe it's a Johnny McGinney from from the New York. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny was just doing this year with Jews. He goes to get the Armagh job. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's his way for it. That's his, his, his way into the Armagh gig. I'm sure he'd love that as well. Good um, travel expenses. Good travel. New York to Armagh. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, but honestly, I, I don't. I, I don't know enough about what what's happening in, in Armagh club football or or underage to know who maybe would be the person to come in under behind them. Um. So yeah, it's a difficult one. And then we've Tyrone against Westmead in Kingsbourne Berkeley Park at four pm. Game be live on GA Go. Yeah, I think Tyrone are, are are starting to move along quietly. Um, 
going about their business in 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 the uh, in the long grass. I wouldn't be surprised to see them make a few more scalps uh, before the year is out. I wouldn't rule them out being in like an All Ireland semi final or a final. Um, you know, so I, I'd say that would be Tyrone winning that one fairly comfortably. Yeah, I think. I think so, the same, my man. And then we'll move on to Kerry against Loud in Leash, Higher Moor Park at 2 p.m. I have to say, Shane, the venues for these games are very rare, but there we go. Yeah, like Kerry travelling to Leash, um, I, I don't know what kind of crowd is going to be at that game, realistically. Again, no dis- disrespect to Loud. They, they've had a great season, but this is probably a bit of a dead rubber game, realistically. Um, look, I, 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 I don't think Loud can get get out of the group um yeah i just i can't see the real point of this one but i I'd honestly think kerry could be 15 20 points there okay the yeah, loud are doing like the loud you know pushed me over very close to last day but do you you think that that margin of victory yeah i mean i think they yeah. were just looking at that one game um they're probably just looking at trying to keep it to keep the score line down um but they're not trying to win the game right like mayo were, were they, mayo's done well to mm-hmm deal with that they just went about their business but we didn't really learn much about Mayo either because you know they already know that they're going to be playing in the next round so it's nearly like don't get injured is the way some lads will be playing you know which is terrible but I I know that's definitely a factor in a lot of these guys heads is is preparing for the bigger stuff ahead and we're just going through the motions here nearly Mm. yeah well the real Kerry please step up because we haven't really seen it so far about Mr David Clifford and then we'll move on to Cork against Mayo in TOS Gaelic Grounds at 2pm of course game will be live on Diego I'd say this would be a good game um, you know Mayo will probably want to build on their performance the last day they were very poor against Loud but again they've done what they have to do to get the win um, and Cork will probably just want to get a, a good game under their belt uh, before going into the next round. So I would say that one will be tight, but I think Mayo will win that by four or five points. Yeah, I'm thinking so the same. And then, oh, skin in the game here, Shane. Dublin against Sligo in Kingspan Breffney Park, quarter to two, and the game will be live on Diego. Yeah, I mean, Dublin will always travel for, they'll always get the fans out for that. Um, Cavan is a difficult place to travel in and out of, so uh, <laughs> be easy for anyone. But, uh, I would say that will again be another bit of a dead rubber. Uh, no disrespect to Sligo, but they're they're definitely coming up against a team that are streets ahead. So I would say that could be a ten point win for Dublin. Mm. And like from the Dublin Hing Shane, like can you a bit of rotation, a bit of squad? Like what are we thinking for Saturday? Like will, like will he run the whole team or what are you thinking? I'd say he's definitely trying to look at different players um, for guys that have been in the starting fifteen that. You know, the Brian Fenton's, Kilkenny's, they might get 30 or 40 minutes. Maybe they won't even play some of these guys. It's tough to know what, what way Desi's trying to plan it accordingly um, because you don't want to peak too early, but you need to be making sure that guys are getting mileage in so that they're peaking at the right time, you know, and, and not getting any soft tissue injuries along the way. Um, so it's tough. You don't want to like hold players back, but you also don't want to. To overplay them and overtrain, and then you're you're kind of caught flat um, because it's all about peaking in, in the right time and end of July, August, right? So I would say that one <clears throat> he'd be trying to see as as much out of some of the younger guys and see can he you know when in the games in a bit of a melting pot can they be an option to come off the bench uh, or will they be a future Dublin senior football player? So I think that will be a good opportunity for a lot of guys on the squad. Mm. Those last questions, Shane. Like, are you happy with Dublin's progression at this minute in time? Yeah, it's it's difficult to know where they're really at. You know, like winning Leinster um, was always going to happen. Really, they got a bit of a shock against Kildare that they went very defensive and they had to break it down. But at the end of the day, they did. Um, and then Ross Common done the same. So that that could be, you know, their Achilles heel is trying to break break down that that mass defence. Um, I think they'll work on that over the last few weeks and they'll continue to work on that. Um, will they come up against it in a semi-final or a final? It really depends on who they're playing, right? So I wouldn't be surprised if Dublin were in an all-out final um, come the end of the year. 
very interesting to see Shane make no doubt about it and then the last game of the All-Ireland series of the weekend it's Ross Common against Clare in Glenis O'Connor Park at quarter two and game will be live on RT yeah Kildare are, are, they seem like a bit of a funny one this year like you know drawn with, with almost beating Dublin in a, in a Leinster championship and then uh, like they drew with, with Sligo which was a bit of a shocker um, I yeah. wouldn't that they went out and drew at Ross Common or, or nearly beat Ross Common. Um, so you just don't know uh, what way that will go. They seem to be uh, lacking consistency in their team at the moment. They've definitely got a lot of really quality players. It's just yeah. trying to get that, that mix right and just get that solid performance week in and week out. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, that one was tight. Mm. So are you thinking... I'd back the draw on that one, or maybe Ross Common by a point or two. Mm, yeah, it'd be very interesting. Both teams could be very jack lights at least. And then the last game of the weekend, Shane, in the Total Cup quarter final, it's Antrim against Carlow in Carrickham Park, 1 pm. Uh, I would say Antrim have been the team going very well in the Totten Cup. It's probably between them and Cavan. Uh, Carlo, in fact, like they won the game on Saturday. You can't take anything away from them. Um, yes, their performance was poor, and I was a bit surprised by that. But I wouldn't be surprised if they went to Antrim and gave a really good account of themselves and put it up to them. Um, so that one could be tighter than people expect. But you would have to fancy that Antrim are the favourites for a reason, right? Mm, yeah, it'll be an interesting game to keep an eye on this weekend, Shane. Make no doubt about it. I suppose from all that, Shane, last question Who would be your player to watch this weekend and bet of the weekend? Um, ooh, I would say the draw for uh, for Kildare and Ross Common. Um, that would probably be the bet of the weekend. And then I would say player to watch. Um, in the Antrim Carlo game, I'd have to say Jordan Morris. I was impressed with, with him the, the weekend. Um, I thought he'd done very well for Carlo. That's probably who I'd say, yeah. Mm, yeah brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. I suppose it's great stuff, Shane. Great, great analysis. And suppose what, what's the plan now for, for the rest of the summer? Get back to play a bit of club football in New York? Uh, I'll be, I'll be club football in Boston, yeah. We, we had a championship game there last weekend and I, I missed the game yesterday, obviously. In, in Ireland for, for the Tottenham Cup. So back uh, flying back Wednesday and we have a championship game on Sunday uh, against our, our rivals, the McInnesby. So I'd be looking forward to uh, to getting back into routine and trying to get fit for that. And um, yeah, championship club football for the summer. Um, the weather will be really nice. At least there'll be good heat. So a uh, bit of golf as well. That's the plan. Back to enjoyment. And would you, like, I suppose, have you got to see many just St. Vincent's lads since you came home? Uh, yeah, it was Gotham one of the lads there earlier on and um meeting with one of the boys tomorrow. So um it's always great great to be back home for a few days, even just to, to see to see the lads and I'm obviously always following, seeing how they're getting on, um, whether it's in the in the league or championship and then kind of getting the inside scoop on, on who's going well in training and stuff like that. So I always be following on the on a weekly basis, um, texting back and forth. So and that's important for me as well, just to just to have that kind of connection to to the lads, even though I'm I'm not there. You're you're you always want to know how things are going, you know. Mm. Like anything else, did you ever get? I suppose I suppose you're busy over there, Shane. But did, would you ever get homesick, or how? Like, or did you ever miss at home? Or it's more the people you'd miss, I'd say, than than anything, okay. right? Um, sometimes you'd be like, oh, I'd love to just go for a, a game of golf or a coffee with one of the lads and have a chat. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's very helter skelter in terms of work and things going on, but. There's th- that side of it you you do definitely miss. Um, so I don't know if homesick is the word, but it's more you you just miss the uh, miss the crack. I'd say hmm. you'd be home yet, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. St Vincent's are St Vincent's ears are absolutely ringing, Shane. Make no doubt about it. Well, Shane Cardi, thanks a million for joining me this week. And of course, this podcast is brought to you by orgretch.com. Use the code GMAC podcast to get 15% off on the website. Loads of gear dropping just time for time. So get your hands on it. Mr. Cardi, have a great, enjoyable summer. And we will chat soon, sir. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks, John.